it's like all the same stuff. I mean, what's old to new? I haven't seen a lot of innovation going on. That's for sure, but I do see a lot of, um, what is that word again? Ah, oh, sincerity. <laughs> do you find things a bit more fractured? Like before there mm. seemed to be like, there yeah. was like a real scene and a that's real- That's true. Um, no, that's very true. I find it really hard to figure out what's going on. Like there is, there aren't things that everybody kind of pivots towards anymore. Which I kind of miss that. But then again, if you want people involved, it seems much more, less kind of glamorized and more grassroots. Like it's like, oh, we're whatever, there's this show, like you, you, and you, you look like you'd like it. But it's not quite so. What was I thinking of as an example? Maybe things like what was going on at Squeeze Box that was just so like, it was progressive, but it was really glamorous and entertainment orientated. Like I earlier see, squeeze box? Yeah, mm. but it was still a total community feel. Like it was all the artists, all the rock people, all the gay people, all the student, like everybody just kind of frisking together. Mm. Doesn't seem so like that anymore. Um, I, I didn't ask you about uh, Baby D. What's uh, your relationship? Um, Where did we? I met Baby D at Otter's Night. Yes. After After Black Lips at Pyramid. <laughs> after Black Lips at Pyramid, there was another sort of this little mini female. apocalypse. Yeah. Sort of a, all a Kali, Kali all esque. Yeah. Kali esque <laughs> gore fest, which was Otter's Trip and Go Naked. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Right before mine, it was And so. <laughs> And I went and I went to Pyramid and I saw Baby D on the on the bar dancing. She was playing a recording, she's just like a vision. Yeah. A ribbon esque vision. Audrey used to describe her as a hot house flower. Like D is a hot house flower and you must protect her and take care of her because I'm gonna be too drunk. You cultivate her and you make sure no one hurts her. Because she was just so beautiful and so talented and so strange that it honestly was a worry that somebody wouldn't just come up and attack her just on being so bizarre. But really no one is more hardcore than she is it's and more able to protect themselves. I it's mean, so she's true. We didn't get it at that time. As a street performer, I mean, she's performed yeah. on streets all over the world, you know, in Edinburgh and London, being yeah. beaten up by like gangs of beer boys. And <laughs> yeah. she just takes out her, like whatever, her fishing rod and she starts beating like, them. But she, um, she's moved to Ohio now and she, but she was, she was a big encouragement to me to try and get the group together and she helped, she sat with me and, Put the songs down with me, and uh, and actually she's um, she's moved to Ohio to take care of her parents because her parents are quite sickly and old, and but she's been sending me these CDs, and she's um, they're amazing. It's really beautiful piano music, and so David's going to release her album now. I told I think David Tabat, who released my album, is now from Current Ninety Three, is releasing her album uh, in the in the spring. It's going to be amazing. Mm. So she's now she's on a whole new trip as a composer. And is she, are you integrating her as part of the show? Or no. Uh, or uh, that was a one time thing? Well, she, used, she performed with it. The first show we did was at the kitchen. Did you perform at that show at the kitchen? I think I was out of town. Yeah, you were, that's right. But um, the first show that we did is Anthony and the Johnsons. The music show was at the kitchen in 97. And that's why we, and that's when we recorded the album shortly thereafter. And um, Dee played at that. But then she, she's been, she basically was on the road for a couple of years and then she moved to Ohio, so she's not really available for performances. Although we did ship her out for that thread waxing show that you mm -hmm. taped. And she debuted some of that music, but she's been writing. Yeah, she's amazing. Oh, she's so amazing. Yeah. Really? I mean, the songs are ridiculously beautiful. Yeah. So, she's great. Yeah, just watching that show, I found it kind of, uh, I mean, you're... Yeah, that's why. <laughs> um, just, I think what's amazing is that you're like promoting so much, so many talented people who are there and who are not. And actually, that's kind of what worries me about New York right now is that there's so much talent and yet people don't have the venues anymore. Right, that's a big issue. Yeah. It's interesting to see those new nights at Pyramid now, to see if that skin Pyramid is going to have another life. But it's totally different, and I find the three nights tend to, it's kind of like, 
club nights. It's not like the old pyramid, which used to be very much about live entertainment. Right. This is like DJs and. It's amazing what it's been reduced to in the East Village. Like, like what have you got? Like Foxy, like literally one, t like three foot go go box is really the only performance platform left left in Lower Manhattan. Yeah. Just kind of bizarre because even because Pyramid really is such a like a. Uh, it was such a lucky thing to have yeah. around. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it was still existing when we were there by def I mean, we were there after the Pyramid had really finished. Well, the yeah. Pyramid made several comebacks. But really, I mean, we were there just r rummaging around in the wreckage. I mean, that's how I yeah. felt. Like, you know, pyramid, <laughs> the Pyramid scene that everyone, <laughs> that the New York club people remember, like Ben Bunny and yeah. this Sister Dimension and Hattie and all those people, that was all 80s, which I'm sure you saw, yeah. which I, I never saw, but we read about the Happy Face. Grizzle tourists from that time period wandering in. But, you know, going. really when we arrived, there was like, it was just like a beer swill with yeah. like a, the dragon lady and not having anyone to, you know, there was nothing going on there. So, I mean, it was sort of like an abandoned venue that we could have access to and use. I mean, in the economy of the time, it was kind of amazing that we could have a stage with lights and, you know, considering. Yeah, and, and knowing was, that we were never going to produce a profit of any sort, that someone mm -hmm. would actually just let that these welfare queens could have a full, you know, platform yeah. in 92 or 90, up to 95. But actually still, by some miracle, Pyramid is still available. I keep thinking... It's still available. No some, one's been doing anything on that stage except... Someone will, I'm sure. Mm. Well, I mean, you know, I went to the... I went to the slipper room and I saw Bob had a little yeah. cabaret at the slipper room, which is kind of... And um, Brooklyn's having this bizarre resurgence of weird performance spaces. Galapagos is like... It's like wherever people can afford to live, I think, is where it's all happening again. Mm -hmm. It was fun to be had. So, uh, I don't know. But still, I would vote for the pyramid if there's a gaggle of kids in this space. I still get disturbed <laughs> watching to the pyramid. <laughs> Have you thought of going back and doing performance? Again. Pyramid? Oh, well, no, just no. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is why you're you're very music oriented now. Of going back to doing. Well, I think you know, for me, the reason I, I I decided to stop trying to produce theater for the moment was just because financially it was so the level of stuff that I wanted to do which just wasn't received. There's just no way to support the projects, and I just got tired of banging my head against crappy foundations like uh, like. Um, I shouldn't mention names. <laughs> yeah. Banging my begging crappy foundations and then making me wait two years and write letters and then, then just writing me an insulting letter. And it's just like, I tried to mm. produce this one play for like two years and then after that I was just like, forget it. You know, I mean, you know, there's a couple of semi supportive people in the theater, downtown theaters, that sort of like what we were doing, but I think we were catering to such a small group and, you know, it was, uh, it was the so music seemed like it had a lot more um, of a, of a, of a, so the I decided. Stability factor. So I decided to yeah. try and try and do that, and then. Uh, and and then, then there's always elements of the theatrical nature. I mean, that's why we're still working together after what's been 13 years. Right. Because we still, it's like these same visual elements. This idea of a theatrical presentation, so much more effective. And Julia, same thing. It's all important elements to us. Like the most subtle thing is like planned and rehearsed and thought about like it's all there for a reason so there's still a sense of that I feel like you two like contribute um, sort of carry the torch for that the more uh, you know theatrical elements that used to be in the show is sort yeah. of is in their domain now and mm -hmm. I do more just the music part usually my appearances in, the, in my own work were always ever musical anyway so yeah, exactly. It was like something built around me singing like a you singing or whatever. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody, all different people wrote those plays. And a lot of them, yeah, were based around Anthony's ideas or well, mutual I'm, ideas. I'm not talking about other people's plays, just my own. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm sorry, I was thinking I'm of it as an era. I'm going to one last word. <laughs> Um, so I guess the tape's yeah. almost done. Um, is there any last thing that needs to be said? Because I have this, I have lots of material here. Okay, so you're fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm a little bit too Pollyanna-ish to say like, life sucks, but we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs>
not having a Pollyanna is year. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't really yeah. know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>